everyone has a thought. Thank you, Eric. <coughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Yulci, and I'm going to talk about uh, Ponmaka Punter 2.0, the sequel. Um, first, let's do a little bit of exercise, a little poll. Who was here at last year, the first BotConf? That's a good number. Who was here at my last talk at last BotConf? Very good. And who has seen my blog posts or presentations or my video online about Palma Cup? Yeah. So everybody should all <laughs> should be familiar a little bit. <laughs> That's good. Um, just briefly something about me. I'm a SOC analyst at Swiss Post for over seven years. I uh, got some education certificates. Uh, <coughs> I like to collaborate with people, uh, public or preferably in close trusted groups. And last year I started my own working group about this malware and botnet. And there's uh, been some more members after my last presentation last year. So it's really starting to uh, take off. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be this botnet eradicator. <laughs> I forgot to take the hat with me, otherwise people may find me this year. Um, since this is a sequel, what happened last year, I've given three presentations at SANS DFI Summit, DeepSec, and uh, BotConf. Um, those were full-length presentations, 50, 60 minutes, and the longest one was with uh, 150 slides. So since this is a short talk, I had to cut down to about half of it, so 75 slides, still a lot to get through. I'll go over some of them fairly quickly. Um, uh, got some nice feedback after my last talk, so thanks, Cedric, that was really nice. Uh, he recognized that I put a lot of amount, a huge amount of work in the research, and this is mostly just on my spare time, so it's just a hobby. Uh, brief outline: what I'm gonna talk about uh, in the remaining time. Uh, brief overview of the infection steps of this malware. Um, then I'm gonna mention uh, some publications about what has been covered quite a bit, the Supanchich kit, and I'm gonna talk about traffic delivery, how traffic goes to the Supanchich kit, how to, how to find infected web servers, uh, and uh, about the anti-sinkholing technique of this malware, and how to find bot infections from DNS traffic, and some passive DNS I've done on C2 domains. So let's start with an overview. So at the top there is a infected web server has a malicious HD access file on it. And if certain conditions are met, the traffic is redirected to a gate server. And from there, if another check uh, is successful, it goes to a Supon, Suponchich kit server. Now, it doesn't say exploit kit server because there is no exploits in it. And if from there a botnet, a bot infector is downloaded, and that one has a lot of advanced anti-analysis detection in it. So if, if it detects any kind of analysis, it will just drop a decoy adware. And that's been covered quite a bit publicly, but the real bot and CNC traffic, that's not really covered publicly as far as I know. So I want to focus on how the traffic arrives to the infected web servers and on the, the real bot and CNC traffic, um, the anti-sync calling technique, how to detect um, infected bots or the web servers and 
I'm not going to focus on Supunchic kit in the middle, which has been covered quite a bit. And I'm going to just briefly mention some publications that are very, very good. Most of those publications have been linked on previous blog posts on my blog. <coughs> so they're all linked from there. The first one was from early last year, uh, from a guy at Kaspersky who presented this at SAS, uh, The Hidden Bot. And you have to make the connection first, what he's talking about. And it's a really nice presentation. Uh, goes over all the steps for the infection, the Supunchich kit. Um, and it also, well, it ends up with the, with the decoy adware. It doesn't talk anything about the anti-analysis checks or the real bot. And it leaves some questions open about how big the, the botnet could be currently. There's a couple of uh, blog posts from Dennis, from Malwageddon blog. They're very detailed and technical, so if you're interested in how the, the Supunchic kit, the malware, really works, I um, highly recommend reading those as well. And then after the last BotConf presentation, Fox IT came out with their blog post, which is very good. I definitely recommend reading that. Um, they also have some nice graphics, which I didn't manage in my presentation, so I just copied them. <coughs> um, here, the redirection flow, what, what checks are made on the HT access server and on the gate, the redirection server until you finally end up with the uh, on the Supunchich kit server. And on the Supunchich kit server, there's three ways you get the, the payload, the infector. Uh, the oldest one is you just get an executable inside a zip file being downloaded, served to you. When you open the zip file and click on the exe, you get infected. And the file names of those are made up of search terms that you you used to get to the infected web server. Uh, the two others use Java, but no exploits. One is a, a signed applet that downloads the payload to execute. Uh, they've been using five or six stolen certificates um, over the time. And the other one is a Java applet that has the payload encoded inside it, so it's more like a dropper. Um, Brad from Malware Traffic Analysis, um, he's done a, a couple of good analysis on those that he published. Uh, PCAP and samples are available to download from his analysis. And he also shows all the redirection steps and the traffic that he saw during infection. And he also shows the snort or suricata alerts that you may see if, if you find an, uh, or see an infection in your network. So there's some, some detection for certain steps, but certainly not for the bot infection. So how is traffic delivered to those HT access files? Um, the, as mentioned, the hacked web server has a malicious HT access file. And uh, there have been three major versions over time. And usually they are put there through stolen FTP credentials. So I'm, I'm not showing the whole HD access, the code in it, but just a few. And it does quite extensive checks for uh, what, what file type you, you tried to visit. Um, if it's the first visit, setting a cookie. So if the cookie is sent, it knows it's not the first visit. And it checks your user agent, what OS you're using, or if you're a spider or a crawler or something like that. And it also checks the referrer. So only certain referrer sites um, will get the redirection to the Supunchich kit. And also in the latest version, there's two slash 16 
range is blocked that it will never see the redirection. So the question is, anybody recognize those two ranges? Yeah, well, we have some people here from Google or some people using Google. So yeah, both of them are from Google. There's a slash 19 here, slash 16. So Google from their network ranges will never get the redirections on those infected web servers. So those IPs are from some Googlebot crawlers. And here is some Google proxy. Now I'm not sure what those IPs are used for, if that's like for Google translation or whatever. Maybe guys from Google could maybe answer that. And one thing I forgot to mention on the first slide was hiding the access, so HT access, because it's so they really try to hide everything for for uh, analysts. Um, they're they're doing a really good job that nobody really finds those infected web servers. So now I want to talk about how you can detect those infected web servers. So. Um, about two and a half years ago, I wrote the first blog post about Palma Cup Finder, and I updated it a few times since then. Uh, this, the script I describe here is almost three years old, and at the beginning I just was doing it manually, occasionally, and that started automating it. So it runs once a day. And uh, two years later, after that blog post, uh, I thought um, I'll take a look at how long domains have been infected and if anybody else is detecting those infected web servers. So from the domains I've been monitoring and tracking, I just took one by random which has been infected for over 430 days. And I think it's still infected today. And I checked on URL void, which is nice. It checks all different reputation services behind it. You can just ask reputations for one domain and zero out of 28 reputation services said this website is bad. So it must be good. Uh, I checked it on URL query, uh, which is nice. It was actually showing the redirection that if you give it the referrer and user agent, it will show you the redirection, but it doesn't have any checks that says this is bad, and none of the other uh, checks, no alerts. So um, Martin, uh, he saw that blog post and mentioned it. This is good research that uh, never got a lot of attention, so that's why I'm here to talk about it, so it gets some more attention. Thank you, Martin, for mentioning. So here is a graph of the number of domains that I've been tracking over the years from the past 20, 21 months. And there's some spikes in here whenever I got a lot of domains from someone to add and uh, even some recent one. And the last one actually had two, two reasons that I'm gonna mention later on. Um, here is the graph of the number of infected sites. So it's been at over over uh, 600 and going slowly down and then increasing whenever I find uh, uh, some new servers that are infected until they are cleaned up. Um, here just zooming in over the last 12 months um, and the last one month showing more detail about that peak and that that was almost a hundred domains that were infected that I added just within a, a few days or a week. So here a uh, statistic on how long the domains have been infected. Um, the longest one since since February 2013 since I added them to my to my list to my watch list um, 650 probably by now it's more. That's the top of the list, and the bottom of the list looks better. There are some domains that have only been infected for 
not zero, but one or two days or a few days, they were cleaned up uh, pretty quick. And those, maybe you noticed the tld.ch on them. Um, that's thanks to Switch Cert, which uh, monitor my feed. I actually made a feed separate for .ch and .li, Liechtenstein, TLDs. And whenever there is a domain there, they act immediately and notify them. And that can actually take the domain offline for a few days until it's been cleaned up. So that's been working good with them. And just over the last two weeks, I collaborated with uh, some guys from Shadow Server and they're starting to pull my feed to do notifications on infected web servers. So thanks to the guys from Shadow Server for helping out cleaning up those infected servers. So, Palm Cup Finder for the masses. Um, I've only been monitoring 1,000, 1,200 domains so far, and that's not a whole lot. Um, I wanted to scan a large, a large number of domains. If possible, I would like to scan the whole internet to find all infected servers. That would be the goal. So I, I tweaked my little bash script a little, rewrote it in Python and did some parallelization with it and uh, I wanted to scan uh, Alexa top 1 million. For scanning the, the thousand domains, it usually took about 30, 40 minutes or up to an hour, which doesn't really scale well if you scan like one server after the other. Uh, so with some parallelization, that uh, got a lot faster to go through a million sites. Uh, took me about maybe two days or so to scan a million sites. It's still a long time, could be much improved. And uh, here's my little crappy, crappy little Python script, trademarked. Um, it's very simple, actually. You just give it a user agent and a refer that meet the conditions from the HD access file. Make one HTTP request to the domain and then check for a 302 redirect. Uh, parse the location header, um, look for the URL parameters after the question mark and see if the domain that you, uh, that you accessed appears as parameter in the URLs. So it's fairly simple. It needs to be improved with some error handling and false positive checks because there are some domains that actually redirect to itself, giving the domain name and the parameters. So uh, needs some improvement, but it could be a, a good start to to actually scan the whole internet and find all infected servers to get them cleaned up. So here's the results from scanning the Alexa top 1 million. I found 71 new domains, which I haven't had on my feed before, so I added them. And, well, nothing really stands out from that list here. But looking back a few months in January, um, textpad.com was infected. And uh, I found that out through monitoring our logs. And I notified them. And they cleaned it up pretty quickly. But uh, that was one of the maybe better known domains uh, that had infections and redirected to that Supanchich kit. Um, here's the PCAP showing the redirect on textpad.com from January 2014. And here is the site from Alexa. And what's interesting is that 25 to 33%, one, one in three or one in four, gets to the site from, from a search engine, which is good for the bad guys because all those get redirected to the malware. Uh, so somebody searching for textpad or text editor or something would actually get uh, a malware, potentially uh, a zip file with an exe inside with, with whatever search terms they used.
So just briefly something about how to prevent and detect bot infections. Um, just blocking those three IP ranges for the first, uh, the gate servers, the redirection servers. That helped us for the past two or three years. I haven't seen any, any infections uh, in that time. And whenever I find hits that were blocked from those IP ranges, I look at the refer and in the refer I find which domain is infected and then add that to my watch list to, to track infected servers. Um, if an infection happens, there is like two domains that are looked up. Well, one is old into have.com and one is new current uh, fasternation.net. So you may only see a DNS request to that domain and you might find uh, HTTP request going to an IP address, um, which currently one, the, the red one, is used. But that's not the IP address resolved by that domain. So here is uh, something that anybody could help with uh, finding more infected web servers. If you would search your log files, if you have proxy logs or network traffic, look for any requests going to any of those IP addresses. And if you do have the refers, um, look at the domains from the refer and I will happily add those infected domains to my lit list and try to get them cleaned up. And actually that's one, one way from the last peak a few weeks ago. That's because on some uh, security lists actually ask people to contribute uh, requests or logs going to those IPs and I found uh, a few dozen beside the 71 from, from Alexa top 1 million. So now I'm going to talk about the anti-sync calling technique. Um, as previously shown you may see a DNS request going to Fasternation which resolves to a 253 something IP address and then you see uh, HTTP request going to another IP that 93 115. So what's the function between those domains and IPs? That's the question and that's the unknown anti-sync calling function that I'm gonna talk about now. And the request going to that IP, the data is actually being encrypted in the cookie value. So you won't see any any URL parameters or anything. So the data is in the cookie and it's encrypted. So here again, what do we know? We know the C2 domain, we know the DNS. Uh, you can look up the IP that's being resolved. And for one example, we know the IP address being called. And we're looking for a function of those two variables to how to calculate the, the C2 IP address. Anybody want to take a guess what the function could be? Okay, well, here's the solution. <laughs> so the first one is easy, the DNS lookup, which resolves to an IP address. Then you just convert that IP address to a hex value. Then you do CRC32 on the domain name this gives you another hex value and then you have to uh, byte rotate one of the two a little big endian order and then XOR them together and then convert the resulting hex value back to an IP address. So that's pretty trivial, trivial, right? <laughs> if you know it, if you don't know it, you have no chance of sync calling this, this uh, botnet even if you know the C2 domains. So that's the anti sync calling technique that I wanted to show you. And of course I got some help on that, that's not all on my own, but uh, from, from my working group I got some uh, really good great people on there that helped me with things. And here is a number of C2 domains and I've done a, a few steps of the anti-sync calling. Um, there are still some steps left to actually find the C2 IP addresses, but um, I'll leave that up to 
exercise if anybody wants to practice. So how can we find botnet infections from DNS traffic? Well, if you know some C2 domains, but you don't have access to the servers that the bot, the bot connects to, and you cannot sync all the domains, for example, because they're still under investigation from law enforcement, uh, which was the case so far, but um, how could we find botnet, bot infections, or find any indicator how big the botnet is? And last, I'm gonna say something about passive DNS, what you can learn from that. So I started with knowing five C2 domains, and I gave those to someone at a company who sees a lot of DNS traffic that wants to stay anonymous, so I'm not gonna name the source, but just starting with those five domains, he was able to correlate the source IPs and come up with a list of 17 domains, and they have all been confirmed being C2 for this botnet. And he actually provided me with tw over 27,000 requests to those domains, including the source IP from a time period of six days. And they had 6,800 something unique source IPs from over 2,000 ASNs. So that's the data I got. Um, mind that it's only 17 C2 domains, and I know there's between 100 and 200 C2 domains, and also the DNS traffic that this company sees is only a small portion of the worldwide. So this is only the tip of the iceberg that we see here. Also, I know that these botnet samples have four domains hard-coded, so any bot could look up one to four uh, domains and doing some statistics on the source IP how many domains were resolved per source IP here's the statistics and you see most resolved two domains and by far the most number of source IPs resolved between one and four domains and only a small a small number, about 5%, resolved more than four domains, which would indicate that this, there's multiple bot infections behind one source IP, which could be a DNS server, or most likely a DNS server. But I haven't confirmed that. So here is the number of requests per domain and they're pretty pretty equal. And actually, after finishing the presentation, I found out some interesting stuff about domain pairs. There's like a couple of domain pairs that have almost the same number of requests. The 996, directly vast, and 991, those two are connected. And the second and third one from the top, those two are connected. Those four domains are likely from one sample. Um, here is some statistics on countries, the number of requests, or source IP, sorry, number of source IP per country. Um, I just highlighted a few ones from, from Euro, Europe and US. Funny, there is Turkey has twice as many source IPs uh, than the US. So pretty much any Euro Europe country around here has some infections, even Switzerland. Here is the number of DNS requests that I got from, from per source IP. So some source IPs, they had like 200 requests, DNS requests out of those 25, 27,000. Uh, so that would indicate a lot of infections for for those IP addresses. Now there are only over two thousand ASNs that I just got from those few days of, of logs, F and uh, I just picked out a few interesting ones or some that were interesting to me. 
um, like bellage.com but I can I can uh, tell you this is not related to the other breach with with the regin malware or something regin and uh, there is the bunker secure hosting which is very secure with some botnet infections and I mean there is some government some airlines some energy a lot of healthcare stuff on there it's I mean it's not targeting any vector uh, here the second half of the list um, General Electric Arizona State government some supercomputer network which is surely nice to have some bots in there and secure 24 is on there Apple Microsoft and that's just a small that's just the tip of the iceberg from that DNS traffic that I got hands on. So doing some passive DNS on the C2 domains, uh, again data from DNSDB by Farsight, thanks guys. And here you see those five domains that I highlighted in red. They were all started being used within a few days and four of those five domains were found in one sample. So these guys register um, domains and start using them in, in pairs or in four uh, by four. And here you can also see the some of the oldest domain was like since January 2011, some other domains since 2012, 2013, 14. I mean, they've been used for a long time and they're still using them today because nobody knows them, nobody does anything about it. But my working group, some guys have, uh, have a list of uh, over 100 C2 domains and uh, they're working on a publication about this botnet, which I think will be quite interesting to read. So here, uh, these are the domains and IPs that are still currently active, uh, taken on the 26th or 27th of November. And again, you see that some of those domains uh, and IP addresses have been used for over a year, 2013, never been changed for over a year. But when they do change, they change uh, a lot of, well, four, usually four, uh, at the same time and here again highlighting some clustering on those domains showing that they changed IPs around the same time so how am I doing um, now the whole the whole research actually started in 2011 when we found some bot infections in our company and uh, I gave the C2 domains then to Roman from AbuseH which did the sinkholing and blocked about it and this blog has been referenced in several publications as well and comparing <coughs> sizes or estimate sizes of different botnets and as you can see here this is just a conservative estimate taking the IP addresses over a 24 hour period it's still over 1 million, but I know that the bots, they don't connect every day. So you may see uh, a bot only every few days or once a week. Or uh, I'm pretty sure that the botnet was between 2 and 3 millions back then. And right now, the, the estimated bot size, botnet size is still over 1 million or again over 1 million. So it's, I think it's quite a big botnet and it has a lot of infections inside um, high-value organizations and companies. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if we can do any uh, sinkholing or disruption attempt and uh, I try to coordinate that with, with people from my working group. Uh, that's pretty much it. If I'm not sure if how I'm doing on time. I have a couple slides. 
but uh, I guess time's pretty much over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we can take one question and once, uh, well, during the, the question, the light, lightning talk speakers, could you please come down? So I have six lined up. Just one note here, this is traffic from two of those domains. And as you can see, the DNS traffic on lookups for those two domains, they're very similar. Same here, so you can see they're, they're related or connected to each other. So. One question. Um, if anybody's interested in this malware or help, uh, helping out with data or research or something, get in touch with me. Maybe I can add you to my working group and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to work with anyone who's interested. So thank you for your attention.